Today's debate was titled Justice Through um, Universal Basic Income, uh, or UBI, and it's one of the Europe at Debates um, which we are organizing in the framework of Future Lab Europe. These debates um, take place in different countries around Europe, and uh, this is the second one we have organized this year. The main keynote speaker we had today was Guy Standing, who's a professor and expert on universal basic income. And we were debating whether or not UBI could be um, a solution to the increasing socioeconomic inequality in Europe and in all European countries. And today we discussed kind of the advantages and disadvantages of introducing a Europe-wide or a, um, a UBI at the national level. At the moment, the unconditional basic income is more a vision than a realistic political option. But this vision is really fascinating when we think about concepts that make the difference. We want to discuss today whether and how this idea could contribute to overcome the present crisis. We carried out a survey to ask 500 young Europeans about their views on social justice and about the idea of an unconditional basic income. Now the disadvantages is, uh, the first one people thought with a, with a great amount, so, so more than a third of them thought that people would work less or stop working. Now this especially accrues to unpleasant jobs, right? People think, oh, there are so many jobs in society I wouldn't want to do. Clearly, the people who would get an unconditional basic income would stop doing them. So this is the greatest worry about it. The second worry about it is that it's probably too expensive because this unconditional basic income is may be quite high, right? The exact amount is up for discussion, but maybe it just will be very expensive. And the third big disadvantage that people thought in our survey is that it encourages a sense of entitlement. Well, people think this might be a bad thing if everyone has the idea that you can get something from your state for free forever. This debate was basically tailored to the topic of European Foundations Conference, which was about social justice. And we thought about what to bring into social justice that would not be the conventional view of European harmonization of social policies, which is a topic that everybody talks about and nothing happens. And we thought about getting something provocative. I think Guy Sending is a very provocative uh, speaker in different senses. He's very provocative for his thoughts, but also for his kind of leftist vocation that he expresses openly, for the Marxist terminology he uses, and also the way he tries to defend things that for many of us seem a utopia. So we thought it might be really great to get involved with a more radical speaker and see what comes out of the debate. As I've just been embarrassed to hear, I've been working on these issues for a long time. And the debate has gone from the 1980s when we were advocating a basic income, when we were dismissed as young, mad, bad, and dangerous to know, to a point where today I can genuinely say we are regarded as, the, as a central part of the debate about redistribution. And we've had our greatest successes in some very unexpected places, including Brazil. Now, when I first went to Brazil and advocated a basic income in the 1990s, we were dismissed as mad, bad, etc. And then a few brave people became elected officials and decided to introduce a modified version of a basic income in their cities. But in Brazil today, they have higher economic growth than they've ever had. They have lower unemployment than they've ever had. Since the introduction of this policy, income inequality in Brazil has gone down, whereas in the rest of the world it's been going up. And women's status has improved, and child school attendance has gone up, along with performance. Not bad for a policy that only a few years ago was dismissed as mad, bad, and stupid. Right? And I think the lesson of that is that the way we think can actually be transformed relatively quickly. And in a crisis like we're experiencing today, new perspectives suddenly become, instead of mad, why not? And then suddenly, 
They must come. And very quickly, you can see a dramatic change. You know, there's been increased importance or emphasis put on austerity measures, um, kind of neoliberal, um, reduced size of, uh, reducing the size of government, whereas um, UBI is something fresh and new that we're um, advocating for this idea, or the advocates of UBI are adv promoting this idea of giving everyone a basic income um, that is not conditional in any um, uh, aspect, such as unemployment or maternity. Um, and things like that. So yeah, it, it, it certainly is something fresh in, the, in light of the recent political discussion. We have seen that with economic liberalization, China, India, and those other developing countries, in effect trebled the world's labor supply. They trebled the number of people who are in, working in the international market system. And they were all resigned to work for one fiftieth of what any of us in this room would accept as acceptable. And of course, that put downward pressure on our wages and benefits, and they're continuing to push downward pressure. And in the process, governments made a Faustian bargain, and I discussed this at length in the book, and indulged in giving cheap credit, subsidies, tax credits, any number of things to get an orgy of consumption. They didn't have to make that Faustian bargain. They could have done something about economic distribution of resources and assets, but they didn't. They went for this Faustian bargain, and since the crash in 2008, we now have the austerity regimes where we're paying for that bargain. And the ordinary people are facing a crisis where wages and benefits are being slashed, while the super rich are quietly laughing on their yachts. I would say, first of all, um, universal basic income, as, the, as its name implies, you know, will be distributed to every single citizen of a given society. So in that sense, it's equal and egalitarian. Um, which I think uh, obviously is a good thing. The idea is that the income is unconditional, so it's not conditioned on any obligation you would have against the state or against the society. It would be basically a sum uh, that everybody receives. The idea is to give everyone, every citizen, a basic income um, that is not conditional on any um, factors such as unemployment or um, maternity or um, being a student so every citizen of a given society would receive this income that they can um, dispense in a, any way that they want to. Now the situation is that we've got a class fragmentation. Class has not gone away. Class fragmentation in which we have a plutocracy up here of abysmally wealthy global citizens a long way back, we have a salariat with their pensions and their health insurance and their paid holidays and their paid staying at lovely hotels where they can play golf and pretend that they're working. We have that. And a long way below, we have the shrinking working class and below that, the precariat. And the precariat consists of millions and millions of people who are facing all forms of insecurity insecure housing, insecure jobs, but very importantly, insecure lives. They don't have an occupational identity or an occupational narrative that they can give to their lives. And it is this crisis, this existential crisis, which is affecting a majority. And it is a real one because the more and more people are feeling status frustration, anomie and alienation, and insecurity above all. Uh, it makes no sense to speak about the state without citizens, about the bank without clients, about the company without customers. So I think in this line, your presentation has been very thought-provoking in asking whether we can stabilize a society by stabilizing the institutions while leaving the individuals destabilized, while leaving the individual facing all this systemic insecurity. I um, did a little bit of research on the disadvantages and advantages of UBI. 
Um, so clearly, one of the biggest ad ad uh, advantages of UBI would be that it would reduce, um, or by reducing um, bureaucracy, would make governments more effective, which is always a plus, and um, you uh, save resources that way. But I think the, the most fundamental advantage of UBI would be um, the fact that it would give people um, both social and economic security. So you have this basic income that you can rely on. So you can, um, if you choose to study instead of working, you can do that and you can afford that. We are arguing for a reversal of trends, first and foremost. A movement away from conditionality and all the condemnation that goes with that direction of social policy. A trend towards restoring universalism as a principle of our society. Every single person in our society should have basic security as a human being so that they can make something of their lives.